Um, I wanted to start first by thanking you all for joining. Um, I've got, if you're able to see my screen, and I hope you are, I've got a quick outline of what we're going to cover today. Um, I'm John Kamen, I should say, first and foremost. I'm one of the co-founders of Wholesome. Um, my partner and co-founder, Grace Brogan, is on the call as well, and it's going to help facilitate some of the questions that might come on here. Um, and today, what we're hoping to cover is, first and foremost, a quick, a very quick, you know, two or three minute introduction to what Wholesome is, why we started out making this several years ago, um, a, a section that we'll spend some time on, an introduction to sort of the basics of menu planning and the very foundational elements of Wholesome. Um, it's a fairly intuitive program and, and we probably don't need to spend too much time there. I'll run through the basics of how Wholesome works from sort of a zoomed out standpoint. Um, we'll take a quick moment after that to pause for any sort of clarifying questions or anything that needs to be repeated from that basic introductory level um, menu planning and move on to some of the more advanced features and tools. We've tried our best to, to build in, you know, as, as we've had more and more industries and clients joining Wholesome, we've added different features to accommodate different needs. Everybody does menu planning in a different way. And so we've added, added various um, features to accommodate those needs. And we're gonna dive into some of those features. Some may be really powerful and helpful for you in your uh, menu planning operations, and some may, may not be um, needed at, at all. And so we'll, we'll talk about each one of them and how we can opt in or opt out of using those moving forward. Um, towards the end, we'll have a quick moment to talk about the various levels of subscription, the free trial, monthly versus annual options, and any, and then hopefully if there's time, we'll, we'll have some, some space for questions and, and chat at the end. Um, so without further ado, I'll, I'll dive right in. Um, Wholesome is a menu planning tool that we started about four or five years ago. It's cloud-based software. Um, and we started this in large part because um, myself and Grace, who's on the call as well, we, we came from two different industries, but both having a fair bit of energy poured into menu planning and food planning for groups. And um, speaking for myself, I was working in um, a sort of outdoor education and environmental education environment that required a lot of time spent um, planning you know, 10 day trips with 15 people and lots of dietary restrictions. And we were wrestling with the complications of trying to, to put those packing lists and shopping lists together and make sure that we didn't um, have an excess amount of food waste, didn't spend too much on these trips where we weren't short on the, on the food. And the, the task of doing that was, was really challenging and it, detracted from our ability to focus on the real reason we were doing our work, which was sort of outdoor and environmental education for, for those groups. Um, and over the years of doing that, we came up with a number of different solutions that I'm sure many of you are familiar with, ranging from uh, pen and paper to access databases to, I think the most common being um, sort of complicated spreadsheets to try to solve the problem of figuring out the right quantities to bring um, for those groups. And in many respects, those solutions did the trick. They, they, they worked um, in order to get us out there with, the, with, with food, but it was a pretty clunky process. It was prone to breaking, um, prone to inaccuracies. It was hard to adjust. And it was even harder to train new staff that would come in and take over as we had staff turnover or, or, or changing in responsibilities. And so about four or five years ago, we started down this path of trying to build a better solution that was more flexible, a little bit more intuitive, a little bit more powerful, and something that could really kind of lock down the institutional knowledge of what works well for an organization's operations when it comes to menu planning. Um, and Wholesome is the product of, of that process. Um, it, it started out as a fairly simple tool. So this first section that I'll walk through with you is one that, um, that we, that, that we started about four or five years ago that just focused in on the basics of menu planning. And over the years, we've added a lot of what we'll cover in the second half of this, of this webinar, focusing on a lot of the specific, um, more powerful tools. I think one of the big strengths of Wholesome is you can make it as 
um, as you know, on the spectrum being on one end, um, simple and imperfect to complex and perfect, um, you kind of get to, to choose along that spectrum, whether you want it to be a really simple tool that gets you through, or if you want to go to a more powerful tool that's a little bit more complicated, you can choose that route as well. Um, and we'll walk through all of that here in a moment. So um, I will jump in from there. Two quick uh, just points of logistics. One is that we are recording the, the webinar and I'll make sure to send out the recording of this uh, within a day or two to get it out to you so you can review any of these things or share it with your colleagues. Um, and second is after that second bullet of these introduction to basic menu plannings, we'll have a brief moment to cover some just clarifying questions really to if there's anything I need to circle back on and go through more slowly to make sure we are, we're all on the same page, we can do that. Um, but otherwise we'll hold questions to the end so that we can have a little bit more robust conversation about the various ways to manage some of the complexities of, of menu planning in this, um, in this era. All right, so let me jump in and see if I can share with you um, my screen as I pull up Wholesome. One moment here, so you can actually get a sense for what we're looking at. Um, I hope you all can see my screen now. Um, for, for those of you that haven't used Wholesome, I did, I did see on the list of attendees, we've got a handful of people who have already jumped into the two-week trial, a handful of people who are current subscribers which is great. Um, and for those of you that haven't had a chance to, to log in and, and give Wholesome the, a trial, this is what you'll see when you first log in. So what we've got here is the main dashboard that you'll see every time you use Wholesome. And it's broken down into a few main areas in the upper right settings. This is where we're gonna jump in to play with turning on some of the more advanced features. Um, but the rest of this, the rest of Wholesome is gonna take place in basically three sections. So the first is your recipes. You'll start by building out the list of recipes that you um, that you use in your organization, that you use with your groups. And as you build that out, it's going to automatically create a list of all of the ingredients and all of the recipes that you might use um, across the entire list of recipes. And from there you can manage some details about the ingredients. So that might be things like what store do you purchase it at? What does it cost? Um, what brand do we use? Um, those sorts of things. And those two sec steps, building your recipes and managing your ingredients are largely upfront work. So it takes a little bit of time um, on the front end to set up. But once you've done that, um, you'll spend most of your time in the third section, which is this uh, creating uh, menus and meal plans. And um, most of your time from, from, from that point forward will be spent in this area. You can always hop back and add new recipes and change the ingredient details. But the power of the tool really comes out in this last step of creating meal plans and editing saved meal plans. So I will give you a quick introduction to each one of these steps. And then we'll pause briefly and start turning on some of the additional features from there. So recipes. When you start out, this will be a blank list. I've created this, um, this sort of dummy account with a bunch of preloaded recipes in there that we can play with. Um, you'll create this either manually or importing from allrecipes.com to make the recipes that you'll use on your trips. Um, I'll make a quick recipe just to give you an example of what that looks like. Um, do bagels and cream cheese as the example. Um, and this is basically like building any recipe that you might see in a cookbook or, or have personally where you'll list out the ingredients that you use and indicate the number of, of um, individuals that are served by those quantities. So I'll say we're going to build a recipe for 10 people. You don't have to worry too much about this. It will be scaled up and scaled down later in the last step. So we'll say bagels. You'll notice that as I build this, there's a lot of different unit types. So we can do these whole units, we can do weights, and we can also do volumes. And in this case, I'll say whole bagels. You also may have noticed that as I started typing, it will 
um, start searching through the existing ingredients and other recipes to see if there's a match. In this case, we're gonna start from scratch. And I will say one um, tub of cream cheese. And we could have done this in ounces if that makes more sense for your work. Um, and if, if tub makes more sense, we'll go with that. Um, again, well, all we need to do in making this is to make sure that the, the quantities in, this, in these ingredients um, serve the number of individuals here. Um, some people prefer to build their recipes out in per person quantities, in which case you would build this as one person, one bagel, and 0.1 cream cheese. The end result will be the same. So you can think of building this recipe however, however you want to. Um, we'll go ahead and check off what dietary restrictions are present in this group. There are a number, you know, managing dietary restrictions is likely the most challenging part of your work when it comes to menu planning. And we're gonna spend a little bit more time on this. There are some, um, some sort of simple, easy ways to manage it. And then there's some more advanced ways to automatically deal with accommodating dietary restrictions that I'll show you in a moment. If you wanted to, you can add recipe instructions as well. Um, we'll put this in the right meal category. And then if you wanted to do some custom tags, this is helpful for sorting your recipes in a way that makes sense for your own operations. And we can come back to that in a moment as well. So with that, I will save that recipe and I've, I've created bagels and cream cheese here. Um, and you can go through and keep adding, adding more and more as you go along. And that is essentially the first step. Um, there is a tool to import from allrecipes.com as well. And we can come back and demo that if there's time as well. But for now, I will jump on to the second step here. So we created our recipes. The second step is that ingredient details. And here is where you'll see <clears throat> the long list of all of the ingredients, you know, that, um, are existing in all of the recipes that we just created. So you can see we just made the bagels and cream cheese recipe and here's our bagels um, ingredient. This is an, a step where you can spend as much or as little time as you'd like. It's completely optional. It basically is a space for you to add some additional notes about those ingredients. Um, so one is a note section that will show up on the, the shopping list in the end say no onion bagels. Um, you can use this for brands. Um, you can use this for um, some inventory notes if you'd like to, to um, basically give some additional instruction to the person that will be using the shopping list at the end. We can define the store. The reason this is helpful is the final shopping list, <coughs> excuse me, will be um, sorted by store first and by department second. So that when you finally have that shopping lot list printed off, you can um, very quickly move through the, the multiple stores that you might use as well as the departments that they're found in from there. Um, we can also define cost if we'd like to, say 12 whole, you know, we typically purchase the bagels by the dozen, so we're gonna say 12 bagels costs us $3. Um, and you can go, go from there. So this is the step where you'll just add additional details as much as you'd like. Again, it's completely optional. It'll make the shopping list a little bit more powerful, um, but it's not necessary to spend too much time here if it's, uh, if it's not necessary on your end. So with that, we've created our recipes. We have added some details to our ingredients. And now I want to show you um, basically the, the most um, simple version of menu planning that we have. Um, that I can show you now. So what you'll see here is um, the meal planning section. And as I mentioned, this is where you'll spend most of your time once your recipes and ingredient details are entered. We have some folders over on the left that we can use to organize our meal plans. And we have the meal plans themselves here um, that you can, um, you can jump, jump in and edit, delete, or clone. In our case, we're going to make a new meal plan just to use it as an example. So in creating a meal plan, I'm gonna jump in here and say, this is our webinar example meal plan. <clears throat> That's the name of the, the, the meal plan that we're using. And we will jump in here and define the number of individuals. If you want to, you can use these um, appetite size fields to indicate individuals of varying appetite size. So if you had some young kids versus some 
um, you know, uh, hungry teenagers, um, you can enter different numbers in here. In our case, I can just say we've got um, 15 individuals of normal appetite size here. If you add individuals here or individuals here, it will inflate or deflate the amount of food that it suggests that you bring. Um, we can get to the dietary restriction section. So it's asking you what dietary restrictions or allergies are present in this group. So we can check off a few of these. Um, this is the most simple version of dealing with dietary restrictions, as I mentioned, and I'll jump into a more advanced version here shortly. As I scroll down here, this is the actual, um, this is the fun part. This is where we actually build out our, our meal plan. So we can say it's a three day trip or a three day group. Um, on the left, what you'll see are the recipes that we, um, we built out. The check boxes above that we just checked, what it's really doing here is just flagging those recipes to, to let you know that there's a potential conflict in these, in these recipes with one of the dietary restrictions present in the group. So you may want to avoid that or, or accommodate it in another way. <clears throat> there's no, um, it's not gonna stop you from using it and it's also not gonna adjust the ingredients at all um, in the current form. And I'll show you in a moment how we can do some automatic accommodation of dietary restrictions as well. So um, on the left, I've got the recipe and I'm just gonna drag this into the right place. I can uh, focus just on breakfast meals to, to pull those in. Um, can get to the lunch section here. Um, there's nothing stopping you from doing multiple recipes per, per box there. Um, and I'll just build out, I'll just continue building out a really simple menu plan so that we're ready to go. And we'll go like that. So here we've got our, our meal plan. This is what we're gonna eat for those three days. There's 15 people and it's gonna do the math to figure out exactly what we need to bring um, for the shopping list and packing list. Um, the final step here is this list of recipes. This is what has just been added. And by default, everyone is going to be eating all of the meals. If for some reason, you that's not the case. So for example, if there was somebody showing up late um, and skipping that first breakfast, you can scale that back. Or if you're um, doing um, optional meals where half of the group is eating one thing and half of the group is eating another thing, you can um, plan for it in that way where you can scale things back so that it doesn't um, bring food for the whole group if not the whole group is eating it. So with that, we'll save the meal plan and create the shopping list. And this is the final output. There's a few ways to view it. Um, there is a spreadsheet that we can download that I'll show you. There's a PDF that we can download to view and print off to send off with the group. And you can also view the shopping list um, here on the, on the, the website as well. Um, I'll start by showing you the PDF. That's often the, the favorite place to start. Um, and so what we see here is the total shopping list. So this is an aggregate of everything that's needed for those meals that we chose to use. Um, you'll see that it'll roll up and aggregate across the meals. So in the case of, uh, let's see, let's find a good one. In the case of olive oil, this is how much olive oil we need for couscous and pesto for the campfire and veggie foil packet veggies. So that's uh, across both of those meals. You'll see that it's sorted by store first and by department second. Um, if you've added notes, it will show it here. And if you've got a volume unit or a weight unit, it will also show up in, um, in uh, the US and metric um, measures as well in that column. If you've added costs, it will give you the cost estimate as well for what you should expect to spend on, on that shopping list. The, the next section here, there's a few other parts to the PDF, is a printout of the actual calendar for, um, for what we, we've planned. And then finally, um, the recipe details. So this is going to show us meal by meal what ingredients we need to, to, in order to prepare that meal. If we've added instructions, it'll show up here as well. This can be really helpful for whoever's doing the cooking um, for the group. You'll, you'll be able to give instructions as well as the units um, and measures needed for that, for that meal. 
So that's that. The, um, the spreadsheet is pretty similar insofar as it's, um, it's a shopping list and the quantities are, are, are spit out into Excel in this way. Um, the, some, some people prefer to use Excel because they're, you know, they, it may be that Wholesome gets you 95% of the way there, but there's still some manipulation that you want to do after the fact, or there's still some notes that you want to add or um, ingredients that are not in the system or um, that you're not using Wholesome to plan. And you can use the, the spreadsheet here to, to plan that out. Another kind of neat um, trick is that you'll see there's multiple tabs down at the bottom. The first tab will show you the full complete shopping list. And then the other tabs will show you the um, ingredients needed for each day. So these are the ingredients needed on February 5th and February 6th. Um, and finally, we'll, um, you can also view it just basically straight away on the, on the website here. This is very similar to what's on the PDF, but you can interact with it by checking things off. So if there are things that have already been purchased or already been packed, you can check these off from here and they will flow through to the PDF that you ultimately um, print off. There is also uh, an Android and iPhone app that will allow for shopping list use that you can bring to the, bring to the grocery store and, and actually check off on your phone as you're moving through it. That can be really helpful if you have multiple people shopping at the same time. They can all use the app at the same time and, and um, check off the ingredients as you, as you divide up throughout the store. So that is, <clears throat> that is the main overview of, of Wholesome in terms of the most simple functions, the, the easiest part of planning, um, and with all of the, the fancy bells and whistles turned off, that's the, that's the gist of it. And I did want to take a quick moment to, um, to pause in case there were any clarifying questions. Um, we'll have plenty of time at the end of this, I'm hoping to dig into more um, hypotheticals or conversations about some of the more advanced features, but if there's anything that you want me to circle back to to explain more clearly, I'm happy to do that now. And if you wouldn't mind just typing it into the to the chat box, and um, and um, we can we can revisit any of those questions that you might have. And if not, we'll move on. So it doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment. And if that's the case, I will jump into some of the more advanced features um, to walk through some of the tips and tricks that you might find helpful in, um, in your specific operations. So let's, let's go from there. So I'm gonna just revisit this very quickly. <clears throat> there are a number of features here that we've added on that you can opt into or opt out of as you, as you learn to use Wholesome um, to match your own internal business operations. So a quick overview, we're gonna talk about accommodating dietary restrictions. This is probably um, one that we'll spend the most time on. This is um, something that everybody in, across the industries are wrestling with, with the increase of allergies and dietary restrictions. So we'll talk some about that. Um, we'll talk a bit about how to make your exports a little bit more powerful to aggregate different groups into one shopping list or to export lists just for specific stores or departments, those sorts of things. And then if we have time, we'll jump into ingredient rounding, batch recipes and multiple users as well. Um, these are used a little bit less frequently, um, but can be really powerful if, they're, um, if, if it fits your operations. So with that, let me jump back to, um, to the main page. The way that you'll manage all of these um, sort of additional features is from that settings page. So if I jump in here, what you'll see is this list of toggles on the right. And I have all of them off currently. And at any point you want to, you can turn these on to, to experiment with them. So the first one that I'm gonna turn on is this substitute ingredients. And this is the, the tool that I was referring to in terms of automatically accommodating dietary restrictions. And um, before I jump in and, and demonstrate that, I wanted to talk a, a, a very quickly about some of the ways that organizations and individuals have learned to deal with 
<coughs> excuse me, to deal with dietary restrictions for groups. Um, if, um, if you think about how a group might interface with dietary restrictions and how we, we would feed them, there are a few different tactics that we can take to, um, to avoid complications. So one of those tactics is to have everyone eat to the, the um, common denominator. So if there's one vegetarian in the group, everyone's gonna eat vegetarian. That's not the most common way that folks um, approach it, but that's one potential strategy to avoid it. Another option is meal substitution. So an example of that would be like, um, if we have someone who is gluten-free on uh, in the group and the group is eating spaghetti and meatballs, um, we're gonna serve them a completely different meal. We're gonna serve them rice and beans or something without gluten completely. So that's a, a strategy where you're basically just cooking a completely separate meal for that individual while the rest of the group eats something else. Um, that certainly works, but it does um, create a little bit more work in terms of packing and in terms of shopping and in terms of, um, of cooking as well. One of the most common, um, the third, third option here, the most common option I think is substitute um, ingredients. And so that's, that's what this tool is gonna do for us. And substitution of ingredients, an example of that would be like um, uh, the example I'm about to show you here, which is that in the event that we're serving bagels and cream cheese for the group and we have someone who's gluten-free, we're, we're not gonna make them eat a completely different meal we're going to have, we're just going to substitute some of the ingredients. So we're going to bring gluten-free bagels instead of normal bagels for those individuals who, um, who can't have gluten. Or we're going to bring in um, a, a peanut butter or a hummus or something like that instead of the cream cheese if somebody doesn't eat dairy. So that's what this tool does is that third way of, of managing, of managing um, dietary restrictions. So with that on, let me jump back to the recipes page and show you what it looks like. <clears throat> here's the, the bagels and cream cheese recipe that we just made. And if I jump in here, what you'll see now is that there is a substitute column that was not there before. And what this allows me to do is to say for bagels, I'm gonna apply a substitute. And if an individual has a wheat or gluten allergy, we are going to substitute 10 whole bagels for 10 whole gluten-free bagels. And we're gonna set this up as if we're substituting the entire recipe, but in the final step, when we make the meal plan, it's only gonna substitute ingredients for those individuals who, um, who have that dietary restriction, not for the whole group. So now I'm, I'm doing a substitute for cream cheese, and in place of one, cream, one um, tub of cream cheese, we're gonna do one um, jar of peanut butter. Great. So I've defined these substitutes now for this recipe. And just as an example of what it will look like, I'll jump back to do a quick um, demonstration of how it might work. So let's make a new meal plan. Um, bagel substitute test. We'll say we'll do this for 20 individuals. And you'll notice now that instead of just the check boxes that are there for the dietary restrictions, we actually have sliders as well. So we're gonna say we have five individuals who don't have wheat, can't have wheat or gluten, and we're gonna have um, you know, three individuals that don't do dairy. And when I come here to add my, oops, that's bacon and eggs. When I come here to add my bagels and cream cheese, if that's the only meal on this meal plan, we've got 20 individuals eating it, when I push this through, what you will see um, is, oh, let me get this going here. Oops, looks like it's not pulling through correctly at the moment. Apologies for that. I'll have to troubleshoot that one later. Um, so what, what should be happening here is that it, it will substitute out the, the the bagels to show that we're gonna bring a specific number of gluten-free bagels and a specific amount of um, peanut butter in place of cream cheese. I'm wondering if I didn't save that recipe correctly. So we can come back and, and play with that in a moment. But That's the idea- that happened, John. You just didn't save after you made it. Okay, thanks for that. Yep. 
that must have been my my mistake. We can do that really quickly here as well to demonstrate. I'll just do it. Appreciate that grace moving too quickly here. And we'll substitute the cream cheese again. One jar of Okay, so now we've saved it. Let's see if that does the trick. Table test two, 20 individuals. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. And we'll say five gluten-free and three dairy. And we'll pull that in. And it should show us now the it looks like it's working. Uh, we've got five gluten-free bagels, 15 normal bagels, 1.7 tubs of cream cheese, and 0.3 jars of peanut butter. So that'll give you the substitutions that'll, um, that will um, automatically accommodate the dietary restrictions that you specified are in the group. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll jump back just very quickly to demonstrate one other way of dealing with this, and that is that meal substitution version that I mentioned. So that was the second one that I mentioned. And what we could do to do that, we can throw spaghetti and meatballs, which I think was the example I used in for dinner. And if we wanted to do a meal substitution instead of just an ingredient substitution, what we can do is add that rice and beans to that dinner. And then when it comes to that specific dinner, we can say, okay, for those five individuals who are gluten-free, they're not going to be eating spaghetti and meatballs and they're going to be eating rice and beans instead. So that's the alternative way that we can, we can um, manage dietary restrictions. So I imagine there will be a number of questions about that at the end, but I'm going to leave it there so that we have time to cover some of the other, um, the other items on our list here. So that was the accommodating dietary restrictions portion. Um, I'll move forward quickly just to jump into um, exporting meal plans, export customization, ingredient rounding, batch recipes, and multiple users. But we can move through these fairly quickly so that there's plenty of time for conversation at the end. So very quickly, um, I wanted to show you a few tools that you may or may not find helpful for your work. I'm going to not save that bagel test for now. The first is this export list button. So right now, I'm looking at my list of all my meal plans. So you can imagine these are all of your groups that you've got coming up. Everybody does shopping differently. Some order from large food providers, some run to Costco or your local farmer's market. Um, and so, and some, some individuals or some organizations do shopping for one group at a time. So they know they've got a group of 15 people coming and they go purchase all the, rest of, all the ingredients for those 15 people. Whereas other organizations will purchase um, across a whole season or across multiple groups that are upcoming. If you fall in that latter camp where you are purchasing for multiple groups at a time, this export lists button can be really helpful. So what this allows us to do is to <clears throat> take these groups that are coming up and check them off or even um, multiply them so that you can aggregate the lists and get a full shopping list for all of those groups. So this is what, um, a shopping list would look like for um, these three groups and this one times three. So it's a good way to aggregate and multiply your groups in the event that you're shopping for multiple groups at once. So that's a very helpful tool that you might find. Um, the other one as it relates to, to exporting the PDF <coughs> in Excel is this export customization. So I'll demo that very quickly. It's fairly simple to understand, but if I jump back to our webinar example, you'll notice here that instead of just being a PDF and Excel button, we have an export meal plans button. And this will allow us to decide what it is we want to export. If it's just a shopping list or just the calendar, you can define just from a specific store um, and just from a specific department if you want to, or specific dates within your group. So I'll just show the Costco shopping list for this, for this group. So these are just the ingredients that we need from Costco. So that can be a really helpful tool if you're planning 
to um, use a lot of different stores or send different staff out to go shop from different places at different times. So that's accommodating dietary restrictions, exporting multiple plant meal plans, um, export customization, um, ingredient rounding. We can breeze through really quickly. This is another feature that you can turn on. And what this allows you to do is you may have seen some of those, <clears throat> those funny numbers that showed up in one of the previous shopping lists that I showed you where it said you need 0.3 jars of, of peanut butter or 0.7 tubs of cream cheese. This ingredient rounding will allow you to set rounding rules at the ingredient level. So I'll come to my ingredient management tab and you'll see this rounding column now so that we can now say um, for um, cream cheese here, we're always gonna round up or always round to the nearest hole. And that'll allow for the shopping list to show in full numbers rather than in partial numbers. Um, some organizations would prefer to um, to manage it in very clear numbers and the, not have the partial fractions and decimals. Um, and if that's the case, this rounding, rounding rules can be really helpful for you. And uh, the last real feature I wanted to talk about was this batch recipes. This one can get a little bit confusing and if it, if it doesn't, um, if this doesn't resonate with you at all, you can totally tune this part out. I just wanted to make sure I shared it for those folks that really need this tool to manage their, their um, meal plans effectively. Batch recipes is um, essentially a different way of scaling your recipes. It can come in really handy if you are doing things like Dutch oven recipes. So a lot of the rafting outfitters tend to need a tool like this. And what it allows for is to scale by doubling, essentially. So on a normal recipe where you, the more people you bring, you add one more person, you bring more food. You add one more person, you bring more food. Um, there are certain recipes where you would want to scale that by doubling instead. So I often use the example of a cake. So you can imagine if a cake feeds 10 people and you bring 13 people on your group, you're not going to bring, you're not going to cook 1.3 cakes. You're either going to cook one cake or you're going to cook two cakes. And so by turning this tool on, you can, um, you can accommodate recipes that scale in that manner, um, such as Dutch oven recipes. And what you'll find is that in that recipe, I'll do bagels and cream cheese, even though that doesn't particularly make sense. Um, you can turn on the scale by batch for those recipes that you want to scale in that way. And so the ingredients will um, not increase until you cross past the threshold of 10 individuals and then the the uh, quantities will double. So you're thinking of the recipe in terms of a batch rather than something that you can scale by increments. So again, that's a little confusing and that's a kind of a niche tool that only certain organizations and outfitters would need, but it's one that can be really helpful if you happen to be one of those, those organizations. Um, the last thing I'll mention is this multiple users piece that's at the bottom. Um, this is not, so Wholesome is a, um, a single login system. So an organization, most organizations of like small to medium size can use one license. There's no need to have um, every individual in the organization to have their own license. Um, the multiple users function is really a tool that allows you to limit access. So there may be situations where, for example, I know a lot of campus, campus rec organizations have, um, have student groups that are, uh, or students who are jumping into the system. And since you've taken the time to set up your recipes and ingredients, so effectively you may not want to have five, 10, 15 individuals in there adding new recipes or adjusting old recipes or um, messing with the data that could compromise the outputs. And so what you can do is add users um, in a way that where you can specify what their permissions are. So you can say, okay, you're allowed to create and edit meal plans, but they're not allowed to mess with recipes or ingredient details. So it's really a tool to restrict access more than it is um, one to give access. If, if you have individuals that need full access, you can share one login um, across multiple people. So that's that. The last, um, 
the last topic on the list here, so I ran through the additional wholesome tools. Last topic on the list here was just pricing and options. I know I, I received a few emails before the webinar about pricing. One of the most common questions that comes up is whether this tool can be used uh, for part of the year, for those of you that don't have operations throughout the whole year. Um, that question comes up pretty, pretty often and the answer is yes, you can. So here's the pricing table that you can see um, at any point by just clicking on the pricing tab on the, the website. And you'll notice that you can toggle um, between monthly and annual. And there are a few different levels that um, you can choose between based on which of those features that I just shared with you are relevant to your, to your work. Um, so the annual will renew annually um, at a one-time one -time charge and the monthly will renew monthly and at any point you want to, you can, whether that's monthly or annual, you can uh, pause the account or unsubscribe and all of the data will still be there in the background waiting for you so that when you're ready to start up again, all of your recipes, meal plans and ingredients will still be in there and, and ready to go. You don't have to start from scratch if you um, cancel the account uh, temporarily. So um, I think that covers all of the topics that we hope to get through today. Um, but I did want to take time. It looks like we've got about uh, 15 minutes yet of time for um, questions and comments. Um, you all are welcome to either unmute your microphone and ask a question, or if you prefer, you can type it into the, to the chat box and, and Grace is on to, to help um, sort through those and, and ask them out loud as well. So I'll invite any questions you have about any of those features or in general, if you have questions about just general meal planning or how to, how to wrestle with a specific situation, happy to, happy to jump in there too. John, there's one question, um, which plan were you primarily using or demonstrating of the, the three kind of plan levels? And um, I think uh, I'll let you dig into the answer to that. Yeah, sure. So the, the vast majority of what I showed you today is available on the professional level. Um, the, only, the only piece that might be, um, that, that wouldn't be in there would be the batch based calculations, which is at the enterprise level and the enhanced export where you can export lists for specific stores. Those are the two features that I showed you that are only at the enterprise level. Um, but everything else should be available at the, the, the professional level. Um, I should say as well, the multiple users comes at the enterprise level, but if your organization, if that's the only feature that you need at the enterprise level, I'm happy to, um, to be able to turn that on at, a, at the basic or professional level as well. It comes with an additional $10 per user per month um, for those additional uh, multiple users. Yeah, so I hope that answers the question. What else do we have? Other questions out there? Hi, John. This is Todd from Wet Planet Rafting. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Todd. Um, I have a quick question. It's what we were seeing um, <coughs> using last year when we were trying, say, if we had 10 people on a trip, but we had um, eight normal eaters and two big eaters. Yeah. What we were seeing was we would get the, the master shopping list would show the kind of increased quantities for the two big leaders. Yeah. But then when we went down into the individual menus per day, those ingredient lists just showed normal 10 people. Is that the way it's supposed to function or is that a glitch or is that something we were doing wrong? I see. So you're saying that the, the recipe details on the PDF would not scale up for the large eaters? Correct. So say, say an example, we had... Um, I'll just use bagels. We had uh, 10 people, two, two of them large eaters. Um, the master shopping list would show that we should bring 11 bagels because it would scale up for the two big eaters. Yeah. But then we went down into the individual day, it would still just show 10 bagels. I see. I'll have to look into that, Todd. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. That it's, what should happen is that it scales up at the recipe details as well. Um, okay. there, there may be something um, related to the rounding rules that I can check 
check in to see how that's working for your account. Um, and if okay. it's something that's not, not happening, I'll make sure to, to have that fixed before we. Great. Okay. I just wasn't sure if it was supposed to work that way or not. Okay. That's good. To yeah. Know. No worries. Appreciate it, Todd. Thanks. Yeah. What else? Other questions out there? Okay, I'll give it a few more seconds, but otherwise we can, um, we can. Um, we do, we just got a question in chat. Yeah. Um, when you are about to export a meal plan, there's an option to include a conversion table. Can you um, describe a little bit more about what the conversion table is? Yeah, sure. So that is, that's, it's a, that's a good question because that's the one of the first times that one has come up actually. Um, that is a, a, a placeholder feature right now that hasn't been rolled out fully. So the conversion table, what it will be is, um, is uh, basically an image that allows um, for like easy, easy conversion between units. And it's been something that's been in development for the last few, um, few weeks, but we haven't fully rolled it out. So it's basically a, a, a table that will allow for a quick reference between unit types. So just a helpful visual guide. Um, for yeah, those I, here. Exactly. Thanks. Other questions? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm, I'm happy to wrap things up. Um, I wanted to share a few final comments and, and feel free to interrupt me if, if there's a question that's a burning question that you wanna get out before we close out the session. Um, uh, first, I wanted to share my contact information. So you are welcome to email me any questions that you forgot to ask um, or questions that come up once you dive in. Um, there's also a phone number here where you're welcome to reach out. Um, when we try to be available for, for a pretty quick response um, as often as we can be. And if this um, webinar wasn't enough to answer the questions about your specific operations for your organization, I'm also happy to set up a time, either, either myself or Grace, to walk you through how this might work for your specific organization. So if you feel like you wanna set up a, a more um, organization specific demo, that's something we can definitely do as well. Um, so the contact information is there and you can reach out. Um, the, there is, as I mentioned, a free two week trial. There's no credit card information or anything like that needed to sign up. Um, you have full access to the enterprise account to play with all the features to see what level you might, might need. Um, and you can do that at the link provided. Um, and the final final piece to share is to, to spread the word if you, if you can. Um, we've had a lot of fun building this um, alongside the current users and clients that um, have gotten um, hopefully a lot of value out of using it. And, um, and that's been the fun and, and um, enjoyable part and spreading the word is always the challenge. So if you have uh, friends or colleagues or um, other organizations that you think might benefit from this. We definitely appreciate um, any getting the word out there in any way that you can. So thank you so much for, for doing that. Um, um, yeah. Uh, one question that just came in is what's the easiest way to sign up? And John, you kind of ran through that, um, but online, yes, is the easiest way to sign up. Um, just go to um, wholesome as it was spelled there whlsum.com um, or Google uh, search uh, Wholesome Food Calculator um, and there will be a, a number of ways you can find us online. Um, there's some really helpful um, 
basic instructional videos that would cover a lot of the same things that you've seen here. Um, you can sign up for your two-week trial there. Um, so it should be pretty easy to, to get that rolling. And again, uh, we're a pretty small shop. We developed this because we saw a gap and a need. Um, and, and thankfully, we've been working alongside so many others out there who um, have made this stronger and more powerful and better um, because the, the gap uh, wasn't just there for us, but was there for a lot of folks. Um, so we are available and, and help. Uh, and they're hoping to help you um, as much as possible. So do reach out. Um, online is the best way. Yeah, and I just pulled up the, the homepage. If you make it to wholesomefoodcalc.com, this 14-day trial will get you started. Um, it'll just ask you for an email address and name. You'll confirm your email address and you'll be ready to go for that two-week trial. Um, and when it comes time to sign up, you'll be able to do that from, from your account once you're logged in. Great. Well, if there aren't any other questions, um, I think we can leave it at that. And I, I do appreciate all of you coming to join us today. And I'll be sure to send out a recording of the webinar here over the coming days. And again, feel free to um, respond to that email or give us a call if you have questions or want to set up a time to chat further about how also might work for you. Thank you again and have a great, have a great rest of the week. Take care.